Don't cling to anything. Rather, cling to the Lord Jesus Christ as your all and your everything. Cling to the Lord Jesus Christ as the source of your well-being. Cling to the Lord Jesus Christ as your source of security. Cling to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for all the core needs of your life because Jesus is a rock that cannot be moved, praise God. He, he's a ground that cannot be shaken. He is the temple of God that can never be destroyed. Put all your eggs in that basket and cling to nothing else. And the evidence that you're doing that is that if you're in a situation that calls for you to let go of everything else to cling to him, you're willing to do it. In fact, if you're in a situation where clinging to him makes you lose everything else, you're willing to do that. And the real evidence that you're clinging to Jesus as your source of life and nothing else is that not only are you willing to let it go, but, and this leads to my third point, you don't worry about it. A core, core message of, of, of this passage if we read it in, in its historical context instead of in a horoscope kind of a way, a core point of this passage is don't worry. In fact, be encouraged. Don't worry about this. Now, Jesus, I want to be clear. Jesus is not saying don't have any feelings about it, like you're a stoic that's just above all the mayhem of the world. He's not saying that. In fact, you can, you can hear the pain in his voice when he says how, how terrible, how desperate for those women who are nursing babies or who are pregnant when this happens. Uh, how, how terrible it will be for them. And this is the same Jesus, remember, who, who just in the previous chapter, which for us was about six months ago, but, but in the previous chapter when he was riding into Jerusalem, and he, he talks about this coming destruction. He, it, the Bible says he wailed. He was crying. He says, how often I wanted to gather you and protect you, but you keep pushing God away, and now this is what's going to happen. Uh, the kind of a natural consequence of rejecting God, this is going to happen, but his heart is breaking for them. And so also we who are his followers must have the capacity and the willingness to let the pain of the world on the inside and wail with those who wail and weep with those who weep. Uh, we, as we follow Jesus, must be willing to let Haiti on the inside. And you, can't, you shouldn't become obsessed with it to the point where you're watching uh, you know, CNN 24-7 and you're doing nothing but crying. Uh, that, that's not helpful either, but to let, to let that pain in a little bit and, and to as the bible says weep with those who weep even as we rejoice with those who rejoice what we what the lord does not want us to do is to plug our ears in our nice little oasis of wealth and go la 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 and and go on with our nice comfortable lives and not pay, not, not pay attention to the massive nightmarish pain that is going on in haiti uh, we have to let the pain of the world on the inside even as jesus did but jesus is saying for you as for your own welfare as for your own welfare don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, you know, it's going to be nasty. Don't worry. Temple's going to fall to the ground. Jerusalem's going to be destroyed. Uh, Romans are going to massacre a bunch of people. You're going to be perse persecuted and hated. You're going to be delivered up into synagogues and put on trial. It's going to be really, really nasty. Don't worry. Don't worry because not a hair on your head will be harmed. Uh, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Yeah, you'll die, but, but you're going to be all right. Because, see, they can hurt you, but they can't really get to you. They can take away your life and take away all your possessions and take away everything that you, you know, thought was reliable, and, and they can do a lot of nasty stuff. But, see, you are a child of God. You are eternal. You have an eternal relationship with God, and they can't touch that. As if all your eggs are in that basket, well, then you'll, you, when life, you know, when you got to let life go, you let it go. And, you know, so it is with everything that we think we own. You let it go, but you don't worry about that because your peace isn't rooted in maintaining those things. Your peace is rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And your joy and sense of well-being isn't rooted in those things. Your joy and sense of well-being is rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they can't take that away from you. Trials and persecutions, they're not pleasant at all, but don't worry about that. That's why Paul says in Romans 8, such a wonderful passage. He says, I, I'm just persuaded that neither height nor depth nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come. Neither famine, nor pearl, nor sword. Nothing can take us away from the love of God. The devil himself can't take us away from the love of God. Can't separate us from the love of God. As we sang a little bit earlier, what can separate us from you? And the answer is nothing. And if that is the source of our security, then, then we live with a sense of peace we otherwise could not possibly have. Our peace is rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, it's just astounding here that Jesus... You know, he's saying all this stuff, but notice this. He doesn't tell his disciples to do anything about it. 
He describes what others are going to do, but he doesn't tell them, give them instructions. He doesn't like go, okay, you guys, here's the deal. Uh, I have a snapshot of how this is going to go down. And so here's my plan, my three-step plan on how you can avoid all trials and tribulations. <laughs> doesn't do that. Hey, you guys, here's my rapture ready kit. <laughs> be, 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 be prepared for this. He doesn't do that. He says these things must happen. This is how it's going to go down. It's sad, but this is how, so this is how it's going to go down. In fact, he tells them to do the opposite. Uh, rather than prepare, he says, make sure that you don't prepare. You put, make up your mind ahead of time, not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourself. This is how carefree you should be. Trust God and just, when you need to say stuff, God will tell you what to say. This completely contradicts a massive amount of thinking today. The way people think about things. The way Christians in particular tend to think about things. Especially here in America. Ten years ago, remember Y2K? People were freaking out. I was a little worried too. But, I don't know. but people were not only you know, stockpiling food and stuff. There was Christians who were stockpiling ammunition and guns. Why? Well, because when food gets scarce, the, 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 the masses will turn into riots. There will be riots and they'll be trying to get ours. And so we have to prepare and defend ourselves. There are, I'm told, Christians today who, given their sort of eschatological chart, which just means a chart of the end time, about what's going to happen when and blah, 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 they, they think that they're going to go through the tribulation period, as though tribulation periods weren't always happening, but there's going to be a special tribulation period. And so they are preparing for it by, by you know, some of them are having underground shelters and, 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 and fuel and food and, and ammunition and guns, because it's going to be mayhem then when the Antichrist, you know, appears, and we've got to be able to defend for ourselves. Which is exactly what Jesus says. Don't you find that all over the place Jesus is always saying, make sure you defend yourself and arm yourself and have guns ready. No! <laughs> this idea of self-defense okay, is so Americanized. It is, it's all over the place. Look, at, I, I don't listen to AM Christian radio very much. It's just not good for my soul. Now, if it blesses you, wonderful. I, that's fine. I bless you. I just find it doesn't uh, do me much good pushes my cynicism button all over the place. But I feel a responsibility to listen to it a little bit just so, because as a leader, I want to know what's going on. What are they saying out there? So last week, I turned it on. And I usually listen to it for as long as I can. In this case, it lasted three minutes. I'm, I, honestly, I'm not exaggerating. I listened three minutes. But in that three minutes, here's what I found. See, the message today is be afraid, be afraid, be very, very afraid. And whoever can make you afraid controls you. Because now you're in that position that Jesus talked about where you're saying, well, then what's the solution? What do I do? Where's my security? And we follow all these false teachings. Teachings like, in Jesus' name, store up ammunition so you can kill the people who want you to share your food. That is not Jesus' gospel. So I turn on this radio station, AM. And here's what I heard right off the bat. Uh, Christians, they're taking away our rights, they being the government. They're taking away our right to free speech. They're taking away our right to carry guns. Like, that, we should really worry about that one. And they're taking away our freedoms. Our freedoms are being robbed. They're imposing socialism on us. Uh, they're going to have death panels, and they'll decide uh, which of your parents will uh, live or die and, and whatever. And then when you get to be that age, they're going to decide whether you can live or not. The homosexual agenda is destroying our marriages left and right. The government is taking over. It's time, this guy said, that Christians develop an attitude. And he wasn't talking about an attitude of blessings. He says, we need to get an attitude. We need to get mad. We need to defend for our, our rights now while we still can fend for our rights. We need to take a stand. All the while, pressing the fear button. Fear. Be afraid. Be afraid. Be very, very afraid. They're taking over. The Antichrist is coming. Blah, 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 blah. And see, whoever makes you afraid, well, now they... Actually, installing hatred. See, this is a false gospel. We ought to be hating him because he's going to be taking away our rights or hating them or, or whoever the enemy is. Jesus says, love your enemies. Bless those who persecute you. If someone wants a coat, you give them your shirt also. Remember the teachings of Jesus. Most importantly, and this is a prerequisite for remembering the teachings of Jesus, don't be afraid. The message here that Jesus is giving is basically this. Follow me. Die to yourself. And all that self-protective stuff, die to that. And when you die to that, you will die to all fear. So don't worry about it. God runs the world. Trust him. Don't worry about it. You're going to live forever. So, yeah, you'll die. Uh, but don't worry about it. Not a hair on your head will be harmed. The end will come. But don't worry about it. He, he says this all over the place. 